ngâm cho đá em không biết như sao nữa Hey, what's up, guys? I know you guys probably miss me. I've been, been resting, you know. Just got back from Denver class, and I just want to take a little rest before I head out to Vegas. But I will be back on my regular schedule, um, doing Q and A's and everything shortly. So please do bear with me. But as promised, Wave Joe has probably sent me the new, 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 new colors. Um, they have just redone this, and I had actually a hand in this. So I thought I'd swatch the new colors for you guys. There's about 50 or 60 of them. Um, all the powder pot should be reformulated to the way that we want it, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm going to swatch them for you guys. Um, let's start with a nice, kind of like a blue. Um, this is 154. So one of the problems is um, I, we try to get rid of the marbling effect and also hopefully get it nice and buttery but also it dries one of the biggest issues with um powder is that we can't get the buttery consistency and have it nice and pigmented but having it dry also so this is what we came up with and this is a very nice sky blue very deep color you guys can see um go ahead and hit that share button so you guys um you guys have the information it's wavejawshop.com promo code nail that if you guys want to save some money um here we are. So you get to pick up a nice bead. There you go. A nice marble nicely. Now the thing about this powder is, you see it looks stiff, right? But it isn't. You can work with it. See that? It's not flowing all over the place. One of the things about, oh, I didn't put enough powder, but let me start that over. Sorry, it's my first swatch, so I'm gonna make sure I, want, I swatch them very thin. I was gonna do a thin swatch, but then I, I might as well do the application process for you guys. Usually, when you, I swatch colors, I do very thin because I really you don't really need thickness, but um, for the sake of showing you guys how to work with this, I'll swatch actual how I would do like a beading process. So, this would be like, um, uh let's say if i want to do one bead or something like that and i'm using my 14 brush so it's relatively large give myself a little more my mercy bigger bead i made this swatch a bigger one and the reason why i like this powder is it doesn't marble in a sense because a lot of times colors like this pigment it easily marbles because it, the colors try to separate from the acrylic but we've remedied that so that you can work with it just like how it worked with a one bead. Okay, I miss doing these like lives, showing you guys product. And all their powder has been reformulated, so you guys can probably get all their, as you can see, just doesn't get stuck into my brush either. There's a consistency there. So that'll be this color. Oh, how pretty this is. Did I see? And the thing is, a lot of times people get scared because colors like this, they don't dry. But fortunately for us, this does dry. Because we've tested it before. So by the time you finish with set, this will be dried. So this is 154. Oh, um, Capricious Island. This is actually one of my favorite colors to have this in gel too. And um, what about wave gel is um, they have... Um, They have the colors to match in gel polish, and their gel polishes are amazing. So they're very good matching, and the gel polish covers really well. But this is that blue here that we just saw. <clears throat> color is so nice, right? Let's try like a more crazy color, okay? Um, I think I saw a neon, like this neon pink here. It's 87. So we know that neon pink's marbles, right? It's terrible. It's pigmented. 
but I'll show you guys. Because this is one of the colors that they had issues with that I told them to fix, and they did fix it. It's okay to get a little bit more monomer with these colors, this powder, because like I said, it doesn't really drip. It's nice and buttery. You see that? No marbling, the color just comes out pink. I'm able to work with it. Lightly. Just have to keep it here. like I'm really doing a client right now, but I'm not. As you can see, it doesn't really drip all over the sides like most potters you see that are really pigmented. It's very buttery and works very well. Slight movement with the brushes. Get myself brush motion. You can see there's no marbling whatsoever. So you guys probably seen me do this live before. I was actually in Connecticut at their home base, their, their warehouse, and I was actually testing out this potter there live. That's just very easy to work with, you guys. Like, you cannot go wrong with that. I'll be honest with you. And the swatch we did earlier, nice and dry. This is the that hot pink. How many times have you guys used hot pink and you guys run into marble issues? Um, this gives you the time. Plus, my monomer is medium setting. It's back in stock. I'm very low though, unfortunately, guys. I don't have a lot in stock. I'm probably in stock back up like maybe 40, 50. I'm running out. So that's 087. <clears throat> Let me get another neon color. 87. That's a nice pink. I would love to do an ombre with that pink. I could have sworn I have a neon, neon yellow in here. Let's put this mint green on the side. Look at this mint green. Ooh. There's so many guys. I have like almost like maybe 70 or 80 new colors they sent me. Actually, I want to try some of their nudes. It's like a peaky nude, a pink made in France. Let's try this nude. I really don't use a lot of their nudes and a lot of their pinks, uh, like uh, sheer pinks, but let's try that. It's actually a very, kind of like a taupe nude. You know me, I use a lot of nude pow pow powders. A lot of cover powders. This is kind of like a peachy nude. <clears throat> Let's see what this color's like. Yeah, so like, I think I'm gonna start teaching uh, my classes using these more, because it does give the students more time to work with it. Look at that nice bead. Oh, this is a very pretty nude. Almost like um taupe. Not taupe, not really taupe, but I dare say this would be a good nude to ombre with. Good cover powder. Um this is actually very um uh I wanna say it covers. <laughs> yeah, see? Just leave it, you can just leave it. I just love the way this powder works. I'm not gonna lie with you guys. It took a lot of time, months, but the formula is so perfect. I don't know how this would be like with other monomer, but this is with my monomer, which is a medium setting. I would say if you use like a Mia Seeker or a, a D and D or something like that, it might be a little bit different. Um, it may be more runny, but mine's a more medium. That's why it probably holds its shape more. But this new is actually pretty nice. I would definitely use this for an ombre, some kind of um, encapsulation. Peachy nude. Yeah, it's like a peachy nude, yeah. Let's see what this nude is called. I know that I know I have all these in the gel polish. Made in France. It's like a, it's a 194. Let's see what this is. I'm gonna squash these because I'm probably gonna use it for my, my, uh, my, um, Client soon. Oh, here's another pink, guys. This one's even more crazier than this one. 
This is like fuchsia. <laughs> this has got to look nice. Some of my students got this in their classes. If you're still interested in classes, that San Jose class is still the only class open left for you guys right now. If you're on the West Coast. Ooh, look at this color. Let's see if this will do not marble. I'm gonna tell it's not gonna hunt. This is more of a fuchsia. This is the hot, hot pink. Just look how butter it is. Just lay it there, leave it there. Work with it when you need it. It just sits. Oh wow, this pink. You can actually feel the difference if it's too much monomer or not too also. So it's not completely like, this because it's a medium setting monomer. So it's gonna wanna set and solidify, but because of the way the powder's made, um, it gives you a lot of time to work with it. And I really just light brushing of my brush to move the powder downward. Um, generally, it, when you're working and powder's drying fast, you have to work harder, but this actually gives you a lot of time. Um, that's why, that's what I asked for. Powder should be like this, gives people a lot of time. I mean, chisel is great, but it actually sets a little bit quicker than this wave gel here. The thing I want to look at is, do you guys remember, these colors are the type of colors that will marble on you. But look, when I was working with it, it didn't marble at all. I like this color. I think this is 70, 78. Completely different pink. It's like a fuchsia compared to this hot pink here. I really like this. It's actually, it's actually true to the color. Um, uh, you see a lot of like um, hot pinks and they come out a little bit darker. This is actually really true to the color itself. So I really like this 78. Which, uh, 78. It's nice. And not oh, there it is. If you really want to test it, why not? Let's go for the highlighter yellow, huh? If we really, you can order on um, wavegelshop.com. I have promo code nailed that. You can buy the pot there. If you really want to test if it marbles and neon colors, let's go straight for that neon highlighter yellow. And we all know how much this color is a pain, right? One of the biggest issues I have with these colors is that the pigment is too much. So what happens is it becomes, um, it just bleeds all over the place. It's really hard to keep the pigment in control because a lot of problems people, when, when companies mix these colors, um, they, it's just too pigmented and there's gotta be something to keep it under control. Oh my God, guys. I can already tell. Bravo. And you can't have the pigment bleeding if everything is staying in the place, right? See that? You see a little bit clear here, but that's fine because when we work our powder, there's really no separation of the the the, the, the pigment, right? Wow. My hands off to them. They work really hard to get this part of this consistency, y'all. I mean, come on. You've seen right here. I'm actually do this swatch one more time to show you guys. This is a neon highlighter yellow. You guys already know what these colors are like. You guys have probably gotten powder from companies that are just like this. And you guys are think, oh, but look at this. Such a nice, vibrant color. Which one is this again? 214, bravo. I'm gonna do that one more time for you guys to see up close, okay? Because you already know, colors like this is like the ultimate, ultimate marble. I'm gonna go right up close for you guys. You have, you have a little bit of clear separation, but that's understandable. I mean, like anytime it's, anything starts to work, the fact that it does not bleed, that bead. That nice lemon drop for my brush here. I 
That was a nice lemon drop. Clean my brush. See it as a brush too? That marbling makes no difference. I'm literally like working with a lemon drop. One of my biggest fears, remember you guys use these pigmented powder, what happens? It starts to, the pigment starts to bleed all over, but this, the modern, this, the way this monomer works with this powder, guys, keeps everything together. I guess partially, I, can, I would have to say that it's partially my monomer too, it's a medium consistency. So if you're using like Young Nails or Valentino or um, Mia Secret or CMD, it may be a little bit more runny, but I wouldn't say too much more, but Look at that. I kind of want you guys to see the bead one more time. Just look at this bead from this brush. It's very important. People don't think picking up beads are important. Isn't that beautiful? A very good Glinsky brush. You can literally pick this off like, like that. A good acrylic brush will never have anything stuck to it. Okay, wow, this yellow really got me wanting a lemon drop here. <laughs> it's so damn pretty, right? I kind of want to do the green now. Um, this nice mint green here. I love pastel colors, you guys notice. Um, I love neon colors too. It's a very nice minty green. What number is this? These are the, all the new formulas. You guys have these available now. 138. Don't forget your promo code. Ooh, man, this neon yellow and this green might be a good ombre. Hmm, I might do that. Hold on. Let me do an ombre after this. After I do, I do this swatch, okay? This is kind of like a mint. Notice the colors, okay? At this point, you should see more bling if this is a, of any other powder. But with this powder, very buttery. Very light touch. If you're ever working with this on a client, don't try to move it too fast. Move it slow with, you know, while it's drying, it's even consistency throughout your nail. You want an even consistency like that. So you don't have any bump, 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 bump. Bump, bump, bump. I love this mint. This is, I don't use this a lot with ombres. Oh my gosh. Let me see. This color is 138. Wave gel. 138. What I want to do is these two colors, ombre together, would look real nice. I'm going to try that right now. Test the ombre. Yellow on the bottom or green on the bottom, guys? Which one? So yellow on the bottom or green on top? Which one? I think I'll do green on the bottom, yellow on top. I think yellow is my more dominant color. <clears throat> Seven percent of the nail there. I missed the late, late night Q&As. I'm going back to that soon. Tonight, I'm my first night back, okay? I'm sorry, guys. I've been so busy. You know what that means when I'm busy? That means I have a lot of things coming up. So that's good for you, right? Hopefully, my team will be going live more and more often. You guys will see more content, okay? They're very great. Please do support them like how you support me. I appreciate all the support we get in the live streams. I want to share information. If a lot of you guys are actually practicing your application, this is how you can practice application. 
that's how I teach in class. Honestly, I teach them. I make my students. I have my students not make them. I have them do the work on here. These sticks, because I think you can get through a lot of them really fast. All right, let's do some ombre here. Let's grab myself a little bit of this yellow. Ooh. Remember this this neon's gonna bleed, so we gotta be careful, but look at that. Okay, a little more yellow, just cover the green a little bit more, but wow. This would be such a vibrant ombre for summer. Like a lemonade set or something like that. I like that. Very hard to use in neon colors. You guys gotta be very careful with the pigment. Sometimes the dragging is okay, but the pigment bleeds. So you gotta really just blend in where you need it. So they have that nice transition. Look at that. Ooh, I would love to do a set like this. Well, that proves it. These colors go well together in ombre. Add some bumblebees on that, and maybe like a honey drip or something. Honey drip. Let's do, let's do some purples. Let's see a nice purple right here. Look at this. 115. I'm not able to go through all the colors, but I'm definitely going to go through some more nudes and some more light pinks before I, I end this. Uh, Cheryl's going to go live soon. Ooh, look at that, guys. Hello. Let's see this purple one action. Let me get some more modern right here. Look, it's gonna marble. On the monomer, it's gonna seep in. Really buttery. I dare say. Look how deep that purple is. Wow, who, who wanna see a powder a powder marbling with these colors? Jesus. This purple and this pink might be really good together. It's almost like a royal purple. Oh, my, my goal is try to see if the color stays true. Yes, when you get these colors, it's gonna get, it can become a little bit darker. Anytime you do anything, it's gonna be darker, but when this dries, it should be true to the, the, the dry color. This is very important when it comes to pigmented colors. We get a lot of clients that want to pick a color and then they see the powder and then they, they go through and it's not the same color. So, 115. Let's do a fun powder marbling. These three colors, maybe? These three colors, powder marble. Okay, let's see. Blue, purple, and that hot pink I'm so fond of. 87, was it 87? No, 78, 78. 
They say, yes, yes, now that, yes. Let's start with the blue as a base here. Mm, the purple is very dominant. Purple is way too dominant. Let me see. I turned less of the purple. Blue pink. So let's do the purple at the base. Just a little bit of purple first. More of the pink and the blue. The neon blue would be so, the neon yellow should be so nice in this. So a little purple, a lot of the blue. Glitter near me, so nice. Um, oh, I really want to see what this neon yellow, this pink will look like powder marble. This has to come out somewhat good. It's almost like a pink lemonade. Purple is so dominant. I think it needs like a white to to offset it. But I really like this pink and this yellow. There's a lot of ways you can powder marble. I'm just doing it really quick just to see how the color how the color blends in. But um, with this, I feel like because it's so buttery, you actually have more time to work with it. A lot of times, students struggle with powder marbling because they the powder just drips everywhere and they can't control it. But this actually keeps the color in, in the same spot. So you do like the, the marbling as in like just but you drop like, you drop like pretty much powder into powder and just marble, like I say, I drop a powder. So generally now it should be dripping everywhere, but this, you can actually just put it in there and just work with it. Hmm, I dare say this powder might be easier for me to teach students how to powder marble. A lot of times we teach students different techniques because they can't control the powder because it moves so fast. But if the powder is like this, I can't see any issues. So they can just put it on and not have to worry about the powder dripping all the way down. Um, you know? Yeah, it's pretty much you put a wet bead. Even though it's wet, it's still going to stay. And then just put another bead on there and just work it back and forth. Hmm. Can't complain, really. Let's get, where's that nude at? Let's, let's ombre this. Having some fun here.
Yeah, okay. I think we're going to use wave gel for powder marbling when it comes to it. Because one of the big issues that we have with students is that they can't control the powder fast enough. And then the powder just drips all over the place or all over the nail. So this gives them more time. Nice. A nice little ombre with the powder marbling here. Fun, very vibrant colors. Okay, let me do a few more before I end here. I want to do the, the light pinks. I need to check to see the cover powders. That, I told them to send me some cover powders if they did, if they didn't. But I like that nude, so that's a good cover powder um, for that, my base color. Once more light nude stuff. Oh, oh, gracious me. Mm, we're still at the top here. Wait, I'm missing a top. There it is. Oh no, that does not go there. I see this light pink here. I want to try. Look at this. So it's pretty, 213. I have to see what this looks like. I wish I some more light nudes. I haven't seen it yet. There's so many colors. I'll take a look at them later. There's this color is unique. I'll try this color too, Boa. It's actually really nice. It's like a green. Try this pink here. I probably need some more monomer to be honest with you. Oh, it's got a nice pink. These are very, very like cover pinks. Um, definitely great for ombres. If you pick a white or pink over like a neon color, because this will definitely cover. I can already tell. I can already tell just by look at the colors. Very pastel. It definitely will cover. Ooh! Wow. You know what this reminds me of. Um, Pretty in Pink by OPI, the pastel one. Remember OPI has like pastel pink? They have like a pastel collection. This color is so pretty. Hmm, what number is this? 213, got to put that in. 213, it's good to do swatch like this guys, when you get new colors and play with the color combinations. 213. This is a lighter one called Swine Whiny. I really wanna try this boa color first for you guys. And boa is, I guess, a snake. So it's kind of a snake color. I dare say it's like a dry parsley or like an army green. But I've done this color before and actually it's really pretty. 213 sexy, yes. It's actually a very unique color. You guys ever notice that there's like unique colors? Yeah, it's like almost an army green. I'm just surprised there's no marbling with these greens. Yeah, this color, I like this color. Um, it's like a snake color. What they call it boa, boa constrictor. Boa is a snake. Actually, these colors are hard to get. A lot of times you guys like probably like see these Instagram pictures and see your customers are bringing these like these unique colors. I call these a unique color because not a lot of people get them and not a lot of companies make them. Um, that's why a lot of companies have the unique colors that they make that specific for them. I feel like this other color here is actually unique also. Um, it's the, the 78. This color is probably unique. Like, there's no way. I don't see a lot of companies having this color. 
Not that, not that hot pink anyway. This is that boa colors. I actually really like it. There's so many colors. I'll probably do another more swatching some other day. But for the sake of time, I'm pretty sure you guys want it. I really like that color. What is the number for this? 204 Boa 204. I'm gonna save that for this part, I'm probably going to use it a lot during the fall. And I, I did want to do this one. Swiney whiny. I'm thinking there's like a pink, like a piggy pink. Swiney whine, like swine piggy. Ooh, this is a nice cover powder. Okay. Sorry, I had to get that out because that green was tinted into my brush. So it really, really show through for the pink, so I had to get rid of that bead. Pretty. Notice how pastel it is. Pastel as I mean, like, it's not see-through, but it still gives the color. That's one of the biggest issues. Sometimes we see, like, um, these, like, nice pinks on the, uh, on the Instagram, right? And then you're like, oh, it's so nice, and this and that, but... It's very see-through, very clear, transparent. And then when you put on like a your, the tip and you don't put it thick enough, it changes colors. I like pinks that show up the, the right shade of pink, regardless what kind of tip you put on. This on top of a natural tip will probably look the same on top of, uh, of uh, a clear tip because it's very pastel. So the color pigment is very well, so it doesn't change color based on if you're using a clear tip or a natural tip. So a lot of people get that kind of like an ombre look when they do like really sheer pink. Mm. What's this color? Right, I'll do one more and I'm looking at this nice green here. Another green, 106. Swiney whiny. Alrighty. I'm looking at this color right here. Almost like a forest green. Greenwich time. <laughs> Gren Greenwich time. I think I'm oh my god. Hold on. I want this. Look at this color, guys. Thai water market. Look at this. This is like such a pretty color. It's almost like a Tiffany blue. Tiffany blue is such a type of water. Once again, another unique color to have. Like an aqua Tiffany blue. Aquamarine. Teal. This would be great for ombres. One solid color. Some stones. White opal stones. Stonework. Yeah, it's like a Tiffany blue. Guys, if you're looking for Tiffany blue, you found it. This is literally Tiffany blue. Tiffany blue. Do you have any brushes for sale or liquid monomer on you? On me? No. I don't. It's all in the warehouse. Alright guys, I think that's it for me. 
I'm gonna finish some of these swatches. Oh my god, look at these colors. There's so many, but I don't have time. I gotta get some time for Cheryl. She's, uh, Cheryl Wong's gonna be going live soon. She's coming, I don't know what she's gonna be doing. But I have to pick out some of these colors for my team, have them be sent to my team. So far, I really, really like the colors. And we've done swatches. Oh no, this one got bumped into, that's fine. So really, um, you know, I'm a sucker for vibrant colors, fall colors. No. Oh, look at this ombre. Huh. Let me use them for powder marbling. Very good for powder marbling. So yeah, I mean, so far so good. I really like the colors. I mean, I'm gonna ask them for more cover powder, more nudes, but they definitely have a lot of vibrant colors. A lot of you guys, now is the time. All the formulas redone. You guys definitely have all the right colors. Um, good luck. And tell me what you think. 171 was this Tiffany blue one. You definitely gotta get this one. All right. WG. One seventy one. Tiff blue. Of course, I gotta clean my brush. Make sure I didn't do a lot today, but okay, guys. I will see you guys tonight. I'll do a Q and A tonight. Um, just to update you guys on what's gonna be happening soon after my West Coast tour. We have one class left. It's in San Jose. That's the only class with opening left. And then afterwards, we come back from East Coast to East Coast and we're going to do master classes. I'm excited to explain to you guys how our master class would work and if it's for you or not. And if it's for you, we'll see you guys in the East Coast. And we haven't decided what we're going to do, what state yet, but I think we have an idea. So until then, I'm going to explain to you guys what a little bit about the master class is about. And then we're going to go from there, okay? I'm going to put these away because I need these swatches for my clients. And I'll see you guys later. And let's see what Cheryl does. Hope you guys see you guys soon tonight for the Q&A. Alrighty, guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Yep, this is Wave Gel. Yes, it is Wave Gel. Da, 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 da. See you guys. Bye. Yeah, so guys, that many, color, many colors to do, guys. I've only done, like, what? Ten, maybe? There's so many shades left. Louisiana, there you go. <laughs>